Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the second episode in a series on how to make a prog trance style house beat. The first one was on the drums, so if that's something that's interesting to you, definitely go back and check that out. This week I'm going to be working on the melodic and rhythmic elements to kind of actually create a proper track from this. Um, and then in further episodes, I'll kind of add some extra bits and then we can work out how to make an actual track from just the loop that we've created at the moment. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So now we have our drums laid down, let's turn our attention to some melodic elements. I don't follow a formula for this, but I'll often make some rhythmic warp synth lines and go from there. So these usually start with a complex wave on wavetable with a plucky envelope and then I'll use a random square LFO to modulate sections. It's a lot of experimenting, but doing this usually gives me some fun results. Okay, so here I have a MIDI clip that I've programmed to play in between the gaps and the kicks. I'll set the wave of oscillator 1 to sweep to street and turn on the sub oscillator setting its octave to 0. Then I'll turn on oscillator 2 and set its wave folding mode to modern. I'll set the warp and folds to introduce some more harmonics and bring it down 12 semitones. As you can hear, tweaking the warp and fold settings gives some nice tones so I'll modulate that later. Next I'll edit the envelope envelope to be nice and plucky and set the unison mode to noise. Now for the LFOs. For LFO 2, let's set it to be a nice slow sine wave. And LFO 1, let's make it a random square wave set to 1 8th. Now the filters. I'm going to turn both on, cutting the extreme highs and lows and bringing up both their resonances. Now let's modulate. I'll apply LFO 2 to oscillator 1's position, oscillator 2's fold, warp and position. I'll also set LFO 1 to modulate the filters having the move in opposite directions at the same time. Finally, let's add an echo, filter out any unwanted frequencies and sidechain it to the kick. Nice. Next, I'll look to add a bass. Here, I'm going to use the analog preset Short Decay Wah Bass. I'll then write in a little MIDI clip to play at the end of every bar to give the low ends a nice groove. I'll then grab an EQ8 and boost the frequencies I want to cut through. Here it's around 200 Hz. I'll go into my Kicks EQ8 and cut some frequencies from the same range to help the two elements gel. I'll also sidechain to help the two become more harmonious. At this point I felt the lower percussion and bass were clashing, so I muted the congas from the beat. It's important to go back and tweak previous elements if they're not working. I want to add another synth, and I think it would be really nice to have a call and response section. So I'm going to double the length of the loop for synth 1 and have it only play the first bar, then create a second synth to play in the second bar. I've written this synth MIDI being played by a wavetable synth, which I created in a similar way to the first. Here are all the tabs if you want to recreate it. I then added the effects chain I showed off in my parallel processing video. I'm going to pan the synths left and right respectively and give some width to the first synth. Wicked. Now with the extra elements I'm thinking about shifting the bass around a bit to work in conjunction with the synth more. This new pattern I think works much better. And finally, I'll add a pad. I'm going to use the Perception Pad preset. It's a nice lush wavetable pad, and I think it sits nicely in the mix, not taking away from our main elements. The synth also has some parameters to tweak its sound, so I'll alter them to my liking. I'll slap on a utility and increase the width, and EQ out the low ends. I'll also pair this with a respace, playing the root notes to give some more low end, sidechaining this to the kick too. And there you go, drums and now melodic elements. So there you go, that's how I'd approach making some rhythmic and melodic elements, especially that wavetable technique. I find using the random LFO square wave set to a really short rate 
to modulate everything, get some really unique and interesting effects. And I never really end up with the same sound each time, even though I'm kind of doing the same techniques. So yeah, try that one out for yourself. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and yes, part three should hopefully be coming soon.